I'm Adam Kerr. I'm a developer here at Fish in a Bottle. And my day to day tasks just involve programming, really. I am a middleweight developer here at Fish in a Bottle, uh, which involves me uh, leading a team of developers on different projects, as well as talking to our clients. A typical process involves us going to pitch for a particular project uh, for a company who's basically put out a brief to lots of different digital agencies and they all put themselves forward to try and win the project, basically. I mean, I took IT through uh, school and college and things like that. When I first enrolled at university, it was just in a standard uh, computer science course and I thought, you know, I've, games have always interested me so actually I'm going to apply for a games course instead. So I did a Master's Computing in uh, Games Development at Sheffield Hallam University and um, as well as getting my Master's there I also got in touch with contacts from local companies including Sumo Digital in Sheffield and uh, Rockstar based in Leeds. Uh, but some of the old members of staff that we've got have got a wide range of backgrounds from going through traditional colleges and courses to just tinkering around with things at home and then taking that, the skills that they would learned there out into the industry. So like I say, I think you can learn all the skills that you need to learn to get into the industry by yourself, but the help is available for you through universities and it does make accessing resources like I say much, much easier. The industry itself is actually quite vocational. As long as you can show that you've got the skills and the drive needed to survive and actually contribute in the industry, then I wouldn't say having a degree is needed really to actually get in. But saying that to get to the kind of level you need to be to get into the industry takes an awful lot of drive and resourcefulness. We always work in teams here, there's very rarely anyway a, a situation where one person was working on a project on their own. So it's good to be able to communicate well with your team. Uh, and as I said earlier, I do talk to clients as well. So. Um, it's good for me to have good communication skills and be able to talk to the client in maybe in a more professional manner than I would the people that I work with, but yeah. <laughs> Our usual project setup is that we have a, a product owner and a producer. They're the main point of contact with the client and also in charge of managing time that's spent on a project. The lead developers and lead artists that sit below them, which is the level that I sit at within a project. If a project is particularly large and requires more art and development than just the lead artist or just the lead developer, then we'll have artists and developers sat under them. When I was at university, um, we had a few art-related courses that required doing a bit of modelling, rigging and animation, that kind of thing. Um, it is good to have an understanding of how art plugs into your game and how you intend to integrate that art. But in general, for me, the, I don't need to know too much about the art process. I just need to know what the final product needs to be, what format it needs to be in, and things like that. But you do find most of the time that because you have developers and artists working on a project, it's good to have some knowledge of the other field, but it's not absolutely necessary. You'll find that a lot of people are very forthcoming with their own knowledge.